Dana Hemmett is a staff writer and photographer for Metro Sewer Magazine, as well as a DJ for Met Radio. She has reported on subjects near and far, including the magazine's November cover story on Burning Man. Here to tell us all about some of her favorite pieces is DJ Dana Mons. <laughs> good morning. Hi. Very good. You, you pronounced it correctly. Thank you. Thank, I was practicing the mirror all morning. I was like, Dana Mons. I've heard all ty types of different things. Have you really? Yeah. Do people struggle with that? Yeah, I was interviewed in Detroit, and a good friend of mine, actually, we were in the middle of an interview in front of all of my heroes, and she called me denotment. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> not what you were going for. That's not what exactly. I was. It's OK, though. I didn't care, because I was just excited to be there. You were right. just excited. Exactly. Well, we're excited to have you. You have covered um, some amazing pieces for the magazine, including um, one of our best issues, in my opinion, the Burning Man issue, which was a big moment for you. I know that you were very passionate about this. You, This was your passion project. Yes, it, it was. It wouldn't have happened without you. You really Thanks. brought this to life. So tell us about a little bit about Burning Man. Briefly, for those who have not heard of Burning Man. Right. All right. Excellent. I get, I, what is it? <laughs> do I get to have a disclaimer that I'm not speaking on behalf no, you're of not everyone, the spokesperson. everyone <laughs> at Burning just Man? Just the general. Um, you. And also, first of all, I just want to say that issue wouldn't have happened if it wasn't for you and your vision. Oh, so um, it's, a bit, it's, it's a group effort, um, which kind of lends to what Burning Man is about. It's a 10-day uh, festival in uh, the desert, actually in Black Rock City, uh, Nevada. Mm -hmm. And um, it's based around the, uh, pr they have spiritual principles of uh, radical self-expression, um, leave no trace, of course, is one of them, mm -hmm. uh, decommodification, all of these things. But essentially, it's art. A lot of people are like, it's art and booty, it's art, <laughs> <laughs> it's art and uh, music. Uh, a lot of people are like, Do you, you must go there for the music. And I, I tend to go out dancing less than I do exploring. Mm. Um, I definitely can assure you that I did not go to see Daft Punk at the trash fence. So if you've <laughs> gone to Burning Man, you know what that's about. Um, but it is literally, you are in the desert, you are hot and you need to set up your life. And I have a village that I, of people that I camp with, and I stay insulated in that, except when we go off exploring. Well, and, but the conditions are fierce. I mean, yes. it's, it's hot, it's dusty. You are even wearing the boots that you I had at Burning I, Man that still have some playa dust I on wear, them. Yes, they have playa dust, and I, I, at first I never want to get the dust off. And then by October or November, I'm, kind of, I'm wondering why. Is there dust everywhere? Because I've been de playa <laughs> Essentially, I'm back in the real world and yeah. you know having to be responsible it take, took me a long time this year to recover I actually had a pretty severe sinus infection because I didn't protect my my sinuses as well as I did the first year. right because there's so much dust blowing around and yeah so I went um, you know finally after many many years I've been invited to go to Burning Man um, many years and I was raised in a more communal type of environment mm -hmm. so once Burning Man came around I was like no please yeah I don't want anything <laughs> to do with that oh, especially right. because I had listened to what people said about it and not necessarily everything you read mm -hmm. is true <laughs> and one of the reasons is is that a lot of people want to keep Burning Man sacred, this sacred place where you can mm -hmm. go and be yourself and feel like you're part of something. And a lot of people who maybe are really you know straight and reserved in you know this world go to Burning Man and they're freer and they more they express themselves uh, in a way that they can't they don't feel safe and comfortable doing here in this life we live in. So I applied for a media pass, which was actually kind of a source of contention for a lot of people. Because as a journalist, it's very important that um, I have the uh, you know, freedom mm -hmm. to write about what I want to write about. Mm -hmm. But you know what that was like for me. I had to apply to the Burning Man organization to get this pass mm -hmm. in order to cover um, events and people on their at their event. Yeah, it was it was quite a process. Yeah. It was not it was not a an easy thing. You didn't no. just one does not just go to the playa. There was not only the planning personally for you and for your photographer, but just to get the credentials and um, we also had a professor and a from professor, the campus yes. who was out there and he was mentoring us, uh, Dr. For Christopher Jennings, so he was really good too. And of course, Carl Glenn Payne, the amazing uh, photojournalist that everybody needs to look at his work. You know. Well, and the work that you brought back from Burning Man wasn't just, you know, <laughs> uh, 
it was it was unusual. It wasn't, I think, what people maybe expected. So you reported, it wasn't what I expected. Right. You, you covered the story called the Awesome Spreader Project. Tell us a little bit about that. That was so. That's really the one story piece. that is in print, and yeah. you know that we've published. Um, I chased about seven stories, mm -hmm. and that is the one that I felt confident presenting to the world because of the you know the multimedia aspect mm -hmm. of it, and I had actually contacted uh, Tex Allen off the playa, that's what we refer to, you know, the desert, and started talking to him about interviewing him, and he never made it this last year. And that's mm -hmm. what happens is sometimes you think you're going, there's so, so many details in the planning, one does not just go to Burning Man. <laughs> and, but he has this sweater that he's essentially has found, not kidding you, in Colorado at a burner type of event where he picked up this sweater and brought it out to California, to Oakland, and started wearing it to uh, the Burning Man Festival. Has, uh, it's gone to Africa Burn. It's gone all over the world. Wow. And I happened to interview Manny Torres, who happened to be the sweater keeper. It was all very uh, 1980s. <laughs> <laughs> he was the, holding the sweater, but I got to interview him and that was really neat. Yeah, so before we run out of time, I wanted to just touch on your some of your current pieces. You did a great piece on Prodigy Coffee House that was in the last I issue. Love that. That's um, in the Ilaria Swansea neighborhood. Yes. And tell us just briefly about Prodigy and so, then we'll move on to your next piece and then we'll get you out the door. Okay, <laughs> obviously I can't have a problem talking, so. Um, but no, Prodigy was really neat because it's, it started from a multimedia journalism class that I had to take. So I wanted to get something th that was related to the commuter trains, which mm -hmm. is like everyone's doing that. And I was defeated and feeling sorry for myself because, you know, it's hard yeah. to be a journalist these days. And I wanted to present some content that meant something. Anyway, I landed in this coffee uh, house that is in an old grease, renovated grease monkey on the quarter of 40th, 44th and anyway, up in Northeast Denver. Mm -hmm. And it turns out that uh, one of the women that I started talking to was a student at Metropolitan State uh, University of Denver. And uh, the owner was this really neat woman who has been working with uh, at-risk youth in Denver for many, many years. And I found out it was a nonprofit coffee house. I found out that they, ha they have apprentices, not employees, so you come in there. Mm -hmm. Not only do they work on, you know, the art of steaming milk, but they work on the art of being themselves. And they're, you know, some of these kids don't have the same opportunities that I may have, you know, had growing up or that, and you know, this is an opportunity for them to grow on the inside and the out, so. Beautiful, beautiful. I love that. I love it too. Um, well, thank you so much for coming today. Absolutely. We could yes. talk to you all day. I know. I should just have no. a whole segment devoted we to should. you. We should. I, I think we'll show. have to have you back for sure. I would love for to sure. come back. Great to see you. Thank Perfect. you so thank much. Thank you so much.